Welcome back, everybody. It's time to take another trip on the California Labor Law Odyssey. As we examine the rampant labor abuse, labor law abuse that's happening here in Southern California and across the state. With the man who got so enraged after it happened to him and the employer and his company started an organization to fight it. Welcome back, Tom Manza. Hey, Tom. Hey, Paul. How are you? Remind us again who you are and your organization and what led you to fight this fight. Okay. Well, my name is Tom Manzo. I'm the founder of the California Business and Industrial Alliance. We're a nonprofit committed to reforming labor laws. And we're starting with the Private Attorney General Act, known as PAGA, also referred to as the Sue Your Boss Law. And that's really what it is. It allows ordinary citizens who think they've been wronged to go to an attorney, and the attorney contacts the state and basically gets deputized to sue on not just beha- your behalf or even the class of people that you might represent, but the state of California. Yeah, late late lunches, misclassified bonuses can cost you millions. And I know uh, because the company I work for was a victim, along with about 8,000 other companies last year. Wow. Well, one of them is here today to tell his story. Why don't you introduce your guest here? Yep, it's Vincent Passanini from uh, Santa Fe Importers, and he happens to be a member of our organization. And, and mad as hell and not going to take it anymore here. Not, he's, he's, right. got some co- <laughs> he's got some compelling stories to share today. All right, so tell us about your business. It's a family-run business. It's been around for a while. Yes, thanks for having me. Uh, our business started in 1947. Uh, my grandfather started it. He was a, an immigrant from Sicily. And um, we operate three Italian delis, uh, Long Beach, Seal Beach, and Irwindale. And we also have a manufacturing company. We make meatballs, pepperoni, sausage for restaurants all over the country. And we also make um, excellent tamales and chili. (laughs) Tamales? How did that one get in there? (laughs) Yeah. A little company we bought a few years ago. This is the oldest brand in Southern California. It was started in 1894. And we're in every uh, major supermarket here in Southern California. So you guys should know the law by now. You've been around since the 1940s (laughs) here. Come on. this You're not some new business that didn't know what they were doing. There's what happened to you, and why didn't you know oh, about there's this? There's so much regulation, uh, and it's um, it's uh, so arbitrary in the way that uh, it's enforced that it's it's really difficult to stay on top well, of it all. Well, onerous. There's a fancy word, but it's onerous. It really is. You don't get a chance to fix it. You immediately get hit with a fine, and the fine is so a fine, or the threat of lawsuits are so overwhelming. You just paid to settle it. It's can kind you, of a legal extortion. Can you write extortion. that word down for me? <laughs> onerous. There you yes, go. I might use it for Scrabble. All right. All right, so tell us your story. We start every week by having people, it's like we're all saying we're in Alcoholics Anonymous here. Hi, I have a problem. My name is Vincent. So our story, our story starts about three years ago. Uh, we had an employee who uh, we let go um, because we were downsizing. Uh, actually, we let him go and, and a few others. And, See, there's uh, your first problem. You had employees. <laughs> Isn't that the answer? we got to get rid of all the employees here. Go ahead. And, and then you let them go. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And a few days later, we were served with a lawsuit for a uh, workers' comp injury. Uh, now, he said that uh, six months prior, he had uh, hurt his shoulder uh, doing some work, and he never reported it, but he was reporting it he now. He didn't think of it until now, yeah. Exactly. And... Um, and when we got the notice, uh, in addition to his shoulder injury, he also was having uh, sleep depri- deprivation problems, psychological problems, uh, sexual dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, these attorneys, uh, when they get these they lawsuits, plant they plant these ideas in their head. Yeah, oh, that can just, happen when your shoulder hurts. <laughs> everything, uh, everything under the sun. And, and let's stop for one second because I was a small business owner myself. I owned a restaurant for a number of years and some partners, uh, an Irish pub. And we lived in fear of uh, workman's comp, and we went through some workman's comp fight. And there are a predatory group of attorneys, just like the ambulance chasers, just like the slip-and-fall attorneys. They should be disbarred. They should be run out of town on a rail, in my opinion. But they that's all they do is find cases, and they literally fraudulently gin them up. They will send employees to special doctors who will say, you can't do this. I'll bet you can't do this. And they suddenly either plant these ideas in their head or just claim outrageously. I mean, we've known this for years. The, the employee who who uh, something minor happens and suddenly he's got a million fake injuries and they want to sue you in the assumption that it's cheaper to settle, right? So we've lived with that for years. Now what you're talking about is how the 
it's grown beyond workman's comp claims, false claims, uh, potentially false claims. I'm not saying well, I would false. say far beyond workman's comp. Far, far beyond work. Way yeah. beyond. Right. Yeah. All right. So In the keep, Odyssey. In the Odyssey, right. It's the Odyssey. We've gone for exactly. We've gone further into this uh, black hole, further into the unknown universe here. All right. So it started with a, a workman's comp claim. Suddenly, six months later, this let go employee. I forgot to tell you, but I got all these problems from right. and all results from a workplace injury. Right. So we have workers' comp insurance, of course, and the insurance companies uh, settle those cases instead of taking them to court because it's far cheaper. And, and I'm uh, sorry, I got to stop you again. Are there one of the things we'll talk about? Is there insurance that can? Will there be a whole new class of insurance that will protect you from PAGA or for la other labor None law violations? None available. Nothing on wage and hour. Okay. Keep right. going. All right. So you because you. Fortunately, we have created workman's comp insurance, and there and that is what pays this claims, and it's up to them to decide, do we fight it or do we go for it? Much like, I'll give you another crazy example, sorry to veer off, but years and years ago, um, I had a minor fender bender, right? And it was my fault. Uh, I took my off the thing, the guy started ahead of me, and I started with him, and I looked down at something, and he stopped, bang. I bumped it, and we're going about 10 or 20 miles an hour, not very fast, but I locked bumpers, Caused a little damage. I foolishly came out. So it's my fault, and I wasn't looking, and uh, so thought that would be it. All of a sudden, six months later, he's hurt. He had to be taken to emergency. Blah 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 blah. All this stuff. So my uh, investigator comes out from my insurance company and says, "This guy's such a fraud. We're we're going to fight this. I this is ridiculous. The uh, I can prove that you were only going ten or twenty miles an hour. The damage." Couldn't have caused what he said it happened, blah, blah, blah. I thought, okay, good. They're going to fight this guy. They settled. And, and I found out they settled because I got dropped and by my insurance carrier. And I called him back. I said, I thought you were going to fight it. And they said, well, it's too, too expensive. Right. And, and uh, for PAGA, I think the, the settlements probably are in the billions uh, combined for, for small businesses. Billions. Okay. Right. So I, I'm sure insurance companies... Um, don't see a, a profit in that. Not <laughs> no, not paying, paying out that, that much money. money. All right, that's a good point because the the cost of being paid out is so great. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm, I'm sorry back to stop. Back to the employee. Back to the employee. Okay. Work uh, some laid off some employees. One of them comes back suddenly and says, "Wait a minute, I was hurt on the job. Forgot to tell you. Now I got all these problems." Right. So the insurance company settled with him for seventy thousand um, wow. uh, dollars, and that was workers' comp. And a year after we let him go, we received a, a second letter from a different attorney. And uh, we were being sued under this this PAGA law we've been talking about. What's and the What's the period of time in which they have to file? They a have claim? one year. One year, okay. right? And we received uh, uh, notice uh, probably a, a day before that year was up. So, uh, and and he had been referred to the PAGA attorney by his workers' comp attorney. Sure, yeah. sure, because he saw money in it. Right. I mean, it's it's really just predatory. There's a certain group of attorneys that just that this is how they they make their money. Yeah. They uh, and I went to my attorney to say, hey, what is this? I didn't you know it, it's always a learning experience, uh, which is what I try to tell uh, other business owners is you have to educate yourself. You've been around since the 40s and you didn't know such a thing existed. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So you went to your attorney and what did she say? She said, well, um, I'll be honest with you. We call this legal extortion. What's going to happen is um, that 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 blunt, right? She, this that, is what it is. Her words. More and more, this is happening. We see in more and more. Of this there's no other way to describe it: legal extortion. Right. So she said they they have you for all these. Uh, they're going to ask for all your records. They're going to find you guilty of technicalities, uh, whether you're doing right by your employees or not. Because um, there's so many rules that you it's almost impossible not to be in have some minor violations on some of these points absolutely so here, here's here are some of the things that we were guilty of uh we have employees that start work at 5 30 in the morning right um and we let employees take their lunches their lunch breaks whenever they want oh, so you evil employer you <laughs> and they choose to take their lunches around you know 11 o'clock noon you know 11 30 noon and they all want to take their lunches together we're fine with that well the law says you have to take your break before the end of the fifth hour. So an employee starting at 5 or 5.30 in the morning, they must take their 
break by 10. Even if they got to do it by themselves over there in the corner somewhere, they can't wait another 30 minutes or another hour to join their friends, buddies, relatives, compatriots. Absolutely. And then the the second thing that kind of got us was uh, the employees came to us and said, you know, rather than have two 10-minute breaks, what we'd really like is can we have one 20-minute break earlier in the day? (laughs) And then, you know, when we take our lunch in the, you know, noon or 12:30 we'll have our half hour then so we get these two longer breaks and we thought yeah sure so we if that's what you want we'll do it to right. make you happy right? yeah my mistake <laughs> and uh, we even had everybody sign a waiver that said they wanted to do this and that oh, and we told them if you ever don't want to do this um let you just have know. to let us know and then we'll you know we'll we'll revoke the waiver and you thought um, you were covered then yeah we, we're, we're doing this because they requested it and we're going to document it. so if there's any any doubt down the road. This is something they wanted and they agreed to and had the immediate right to pull out of if they didn't like it. Right, right. And and so this is how the penalties work. They look at, they go back four years and they look at all these late lunches. So, you know, we have 70 employees. So if everybody's taking a late lunch every day, you know, add that up. Now, when they take a late lunch, the penalty is you have to pay them an extra hour's wage. Um, and of course, we weren't doing say, that. Be- say that again. So we, if I took a late lunch, and this can be what? How late is late? A minute? An hour? A second. Yeah. A second. Well, they say they give you some leeway, but you know, if you have enough of them, they're they're gonna get you. So, you know, five minutes, anything over five minutes is probably gonna they're gonna question. All right. So now uh, if everybody for every potential five minute for, for every potential missed lunch that was more than five minutes late, I have to give them an hour of pay. That's right. And uh, it's and but this is just the employees that are present that time, right? So, or, or is it all the employees that used to work there as well? Well, it's everybody. Well, okay. So the past four years, whether the employees are still in em, employed or not, so it's even terminated employees. If they were working with you in the last four years, they're included. They get a they get a little Christmas. You know, uh, Vince, I'm just curious. How many years did you guys have that practice of taking lunch at eleven o'clock or twelve o'clock? No, it's just that was their standard practice. I mean, but how many years do you think they were? Give me a number: five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, twenty, thirty years, twenty or thirty years. You guys have been doing this. (laughs) You evil. We're uh, lucky they only got us. For and four. I think that's what a lot of people don't really understand. A lot of uh, family uh, type businesses, you know, um, smaller, they work out deals, you know, so they can accommodate their employees. And they've been doing it forever. So even if Vince five years ago said, hey, you know, we need to change this, uh, he's going to have upset employees. You're trying to make your employees happy so they stay working for you. Right. Right. So what happens is you've got a penalty for the late lunch. You've got a penalty for not paying the penalty. Then you've got a penalty because they're now technically their wage statement is incorrect because you didn't pay them correctly. That's, what I, that's so the one an, that Tom so the, keeps hitting. So it's let, another let's, penalty. Let's go. So a penalty for taking late lunch. Okay. Maybe I get that. But for every employee that ever worked for you for the fa- past four years. Then there's a penalty because you didn't know you had a penalty and you didn't pay it. That's right. So there's immediately a second penalty for not paying the first penalty that you didn't even know. I didn't know I was in violation. I owed a penalty, and there's a penalty for that. And then, then this other one, you handled everybody a wage and pay stub. Talk about that seems to be one of the hot button issues that these predatory looks for. That seems to be an easy mark. If they can find any violation in that pay stub, you would think it would just be a minor correction. You correct it and pay back, and maybe you pay them a few pennies that were missing one way or another. Not so? Right. So you have to have uh, the name of the company, the address. Uh, you have to have their vacation pay accrued, their sick pay accrued. You know, you have to have the hours worked you know, overtime. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, rates. but I'm going to really quickly. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm understanding now that you got to make sure as an employer – that the bank is located in California. And if the bank is not located in California, you could have a really big problem. And meaning what? So if it was like if, you, if it was uh, somebody owned by an out of state firm and their Correct. bank was based in Ohio Correct. and didn't have a branch out here or something? Correct. That could be a, a penalty. So another thing to think about when it comes to paychecks. Who, uh, who do you turn to? I would think all the paycheck, most people don't process their own paychecks, I think, anymore. I don't know, or do they? I don't know. Do most of you guys 
do this internally or do you get some outside service like yeah, we have outside services but the problem is uh, even you know they they have no liability so even they have if they zero have, liability they, they have, have no mis- liability so you they did it wrong <laughs> and you got to pay oh my god this gets worse by the minute That's all right, right. Um, so all these penalties add up. And Our payroll company lost the original paperwork, believe it or not. They <laughs> lost the original paperwork. And that's, I'm it's not, not kidding convenient. about that. Thanks so. for doing a bad job. <laughs> Appreciate all right. your support. Yeah. <laughs> so all these penalties add up, and when they add them up, they can add up into the millions of dollars. So here you are. For on, how many employees? Uh, well, probably, I think we had about 180 employees um, that were uh, you know, past you, you gave me a present. number earlier, Tom. So just so we can calculate this in my head, when they come knocking on your door for a PAGA lawsuit for either a missed lunch or a pay stub violation, those seems to be the two hot ones. There's right. a lot of other ones they can go after, but those seem to be the two easy put, money. Put lo- fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars per employee in your budget for what you're going to have to what, pay. What you could end up looking at. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so then you're under the gun. It's it's you know, or you know over a barrel, as they say. You're you either have to try and go to court, and you know the uh, if you lose, it could cost you a couple million dollars plus all the attorney fees. Uh, the attorney fees could easily uh, you know get up there, and and then you also have to pay the plaintiff's fees uh, as uh, attorney's fees as well. So oh, it's and it's that's a, really where it becomes the risk uh, valuation happens. I know this is not fair. I don't even think this is right. I'll bet I could win. But the cost to win is so high, you give up. Oh, but you, you can't, That's where the outrage you can't comes win, from. though, because if the lunch is taken past five hours, if the break was missed, there is no winning. Voluntarily or not. Right. There's no winning. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just regardless of what your intent is. And, right. and therefore, if the break was wrong, then the paycheck is automatically wrong, too. Well, not so much on the break, but if the break was missed, I think they can only compile. I think the lunch and the break was probably all into one. I always try to put it in perspective. I always try to tell people, well, imagine you're you get pulled over, uh, you're driving on the 405, and you're right. you know you're you're going in excess of the the speed limit, you know, which nobody does that in Southern California. No, not me. Well, you uh, can't for most of the time. But anyway, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why everybody was honking at me on the way here. <laughs> okay, yes. I had a lot of people so, waving at me. So I get pulled over so for get, speeding. Sure. So you get pulled over, and the police officer says, "Well, you're going in excess of 65. We're going to give you this ticket, but hey, you know, we're also going to look back the past four years." We have cameras that we could go That's track right. you on, and yeah, right. In the, fir- the the past four years, we're going to look at every day you drove over the speed limit, and we're going to give you a penalty for each of those days. And and each of those days you didn't pay that penalty, we're going to penal- penalize another you one. another penalty for right. for not paying. Uh, and you can imagine how quickly those things add that up. That sums up. That sums up Paga. That's a that's a that's a great job, great example. So how did you feel when you found out they had you? Oh, I was I was just so angry but you're just you feel completely helpless you know, there's nothing you can do and what did your attorney tell you to do uh they told me that what you're going to have to do is settle and you know we went to mediation and uh what did the number start out in mediation yeah. i'm curious well mediation uh what was the first number they flung at oh you? it was well over uh two million dollars is i think two and a half million dollars um, no hesitation they stand there and say we're going to get you for $2 million. Right. Well, they just go down the list of all the penalties and all the penalties of the penalties and the penalties of the penalties of the penalties. <laughs> and, you just... and your attorney says what? <laughs> says, no, they got you. No, they got you. Nothing yeah. we can do. Don't any attorneys rise up and say, no, this is wrong. We can fight this. You can't. Uh, you can't fight it. The cost. So we ended up settling for uh, $300,000. And what was criminal to me uh, about it, the settlement was that most of the money didn't even go to the employees. I mean, the employees, each employee got a very small amount. A uh, hundred thousand dollars of that settlement, as part of the settlement agreement, a hundred thousand dollars, a third of it went to the plaintiff's attorneys. This predatory group that uh, whipped this up and found this. Uh, uh, somebody came in with a workman's comp claim, and they quickly whipped it up into something else. Right. And that's what they're about getting, about a third on and, everything. And they want to go to settlement because they, at, at this point, they put so little work into it. Yeah. All they did was request our records. Yeah. We had to do all the discovery. Um, that's so, because they're suing on behalf of the state, so they have extra power and extra 
That's extra subpoena right. power to pull all these they records. They want a and, list of your employees, names, numbers, social security. And then you have to come pay to comply with it. So there's a cost in compliance. Oh, when they punched the, in, when they punched out. The amount of work and, that went into compiling all those records and reports and getting them, getting it over to them. And then my... Then you wonder, do they even look at it, right? Well, they looked at it enough to... <laughs> To calculate the penalties. <laughs> yeah. I just think they look at the number of employees and that's it. Yeah. But, their, but their cost in this thing was, was tiny compared. And then my attorney, you know, uh, cost me another $150,000. So, you know, the settlement. For her, and all the while she's just saying, just settle it. Right. I mean, you got to pay her 150000 just so you could have fired her for that and uh, done it on your own almost, oh, except that like you it. can't. But, you yeah. Know. Right. All right. So you're paying her. She, she She's saying settle. You're paying your accountant and other people to comply with this discovery, to comply with the records, to come forth with the records that they're requesting. So you got over a half a million dollars into this, then? Yeah, just just about. And then, and wow. then the, here's here's what's crazy: the state is giving this power to this attorney to sue on their behalf. Right. And of course, you'd think, well, the state's got to want to get something out of this. Yeah. Uh, as part of the settlement agreement, the state got ten thousand dollars. What? So because I thought they could. A Third of it, or something. It's negotiated. Yeah. What, what a lot of people don't realize, it goes into mediation. So what's negotiated is what the employees owed, what the penalties are, what the state gets. The only thing that's not negotiated is the, the uh, attorney's fee. The attorney's fee. Yeah. Wow. So we got a predatory group of attorneys who see an opportunity and are seizing on it to literally shake you down to extort money from business, and your own attorney says. You can't fight this. But the, the stress and the aggravation is what a lot of people don't understand. I mean, in reality... So, so talk about that. I mean... Give us some stress and examination. Yeah, or, or, Vince, or, 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 go, uh, stress elaborate and, on that. No, oh, I mean, just sleepless nights. You're just angry, upset. You, and you just feel completely helpless. Uh, you're you know, being coerced into doing something that, that is just completely out of your power. Um, you know, people talk about you know, businesses and, uh, you know, not doing right by their employees. But, you know, the relationship between a business person and their employees is strictly voluntary. You know, you don't have to hire this person and this person doesn't have to come work for you. But when you have the state, you know, you have the power, the coercive power of the state to make you do things, you know, taxes and, and um, you know, possibility of jail I and mean, you're you're under the gun you you don't have a choice and but, so you feel completely but it helpless. is all for the good of the employees that's why we put these laws and protections into place to well, uh, to prevent abuse to prevent uh, problems to make sure that they get what uh, is fair and is coming to them so what did they get well, so let me speak to that because the <laughs> the settlement agreement doesn't ask you to fix anything they're what? not they don't tell you to change your practices my attorney advised me, hey, so this doesn't happen again, you, you better change your to. practices. <laughs> but that wasn't part of the settlement. No. It wasn't they, to they, correct the underlying problem. They couldn't care less what They don't you want you to correct it because they want to come back and sue you again. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely right. So you didn't have to fix anything, and how much did the aggrieved employees get out of this 300000 Three, You you coughed up 300000 plus another 100000 to your attorney. One fifty to his attorney. 150 how yeah. much did the aggrieved employee get so the the employees got i think it all they they probably got about 160,000 dollars probably split up between i want to say 180 of them it's about 1000 bucks a piece maybe. yeah 1000 bucks a piece it would have been cheaper if you'd paid them all 2000 bucks and uh, they'd all just drop the lawsuit does anybody ever do that do you ever go to them and say drop this whole thing once you get it going it's almost impossible to stop yeah, actually, you can do that, um, but your our attorney advises. You know, they the attorneys advise against it because it's, it's yeah, because they don't get paid. <laughs> well, and and it's really risky because if it's if it doesn't work, then risky. you're going then you're going to court for sure. Yeah, it's very risky because if you tried to settle, say you settled with all the employees that are working for you. Yeah, you got a hundred in a room and you said okay, there. all right, guys, we're all settled up. Well, what about the eighty that don't work for you anymore? And what if some of those guys say, oh, I don't think so. I'm not working right now. I'd like to get a little extra money. It's a huge risk to try and do that. I think mean, every single business is at risk for this type of lawsuit. Every it's just a, single business. It's just, a, it's just a matter of time. It, it, we're all sitting there with a target on our back. That's right. From now, big to little. Yeah. You know, Vince, I think what's important is you had a culture prior to the lawsuit. How do you feel the culture of your company is now after the lawsuit? Well, that, and that's a great question. 
and what's happened now is we've become like this Gestapo because we're enforcing our employees to do things a certain way. The the regulations, if you hold to them strictly, really limit the employees freedom and flexibility. So what, in what time they can do they do. start? What time does an employee so start? An employee now? might start at five thirty. And they, what time do they take their lunch? Well then? we have them take their lunch around ten because we want some margin of safety. <laughs> <So 10 laughs> because you know things happen. You right. know, oh I got caught up in doing this project or you know, that sort of thing. Um, and how do you enforce this? You literally pull them off the line. I don't know. I can't picture what you guys do. Yeah, well, we, we literally have sandwiches. to walk around and, and tell everybody and that they have to take their breaks. Um, and if they say, no, I'll wait, I'm okay. Yeah, we, we say, nope, you have to go. You have to go. And then, you know, once in a while, uh, we do ask an employee to take a late lunch, and um, it's usually the manager's prerogative. But when we do that, we pay them their extra hour. Pay them the extra hour. Yeah. Penalty. Uh, so we, you know, and you know, nobody's unhappy about and that. And how do you I, that's account right for all this? That's the other thing. So how do I know later on, how can I prove that I, even if I'm being a strict adherent to the law, how do I prove this? You need sophisticated time clock systems, and that's another expense that people don't realize. You know, you have to really invest in something that keeps track of all of this. Because when the attorneys do come, you need to be able to provide that data and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, this, this is... This I can is prove otherwise. Right. Yeah, if I could give one piece of advice to business people out there, especially smaller businesses that don't use uh, sophisticated time clocks... That just have literally something you punch, a, you stick it in and right, punches a time. Right, so there's a practice called rounding that, you know, we used to do for years and years, and, and you just round to the to 15 minutes, and, um, you know, usually sometimes it works out in the employee's favor, sometimes it works out in the employer's favor, but usually it evens out pretty much. Um, I and would, does the time clock round it out, or do you round no, it No, the, the person rounds it out because the time clock, you know, only gives to the to minute. It just makes it quicker to, to calculate. Right. Um, when you're adding up all the minutes, you just round right. it. Right, but, you, but uh, now with technology, it's much better to just make sure that you're paying employees to the very second that they work. It's the only way to do it, to, to stay out of trouble. And that was one thing when they... Uh, Sued timely, they they looked at they wanted to know our rounding up and rounding down right. policies. And right. the name of the company was Timely. After all, you're supposed to keep track of all <laughs> timely reports on this. I bet. So it, you literally have to have something that sophisticated. And what's what's a system like that cost versus the old just time clock to, oh, okay. and card system? We we got a quote from uh, ADP. And I believe it was a little over a hundred thousand dollars for like the software and what? the time clocks. Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah, yeah, they have all that biometric stuff. Oh. On. Biometric, so you, you use expensive. their thumb and it proves that somebody didn't punch in for you, I that's guess, right. or something. Here. That's right. Oh my goodness! So, so to be preventative, there is a cost associated with to to try and be in compliance. And if you are, then you better make sure that you don't lose the records, like Tom said, or have imprecise record keeping or any mistakes in the record, because that still opens the door to the lawsuit. It isn't just that, no, you're wrong, but you can't prove it, or there were some minor violations that we're going to go after anyway, and you're still being sued. And in the end, it's not about fixing those things. That's what outrages me. And, and you would think legislation is there to prevent abuse and, and like the fix-it ticket you get on the, on the freeway. If I don't have my tag in my car, I got 30 days to fix it. Do you have 30 days to fix any of this stuff? They have one little small yeah. fix in, in legislation, and that would be the paycheck if there was something inaccurate. But there's a timing issue because there's only 33 days to fix it. And normally by the time you get the letter from the state, it's too late to fix it. And <laughs> after they've accused you of nine or ten different things... They, they've opened Pandora's box anyway, so it really is no help whatsoever. But again, if I, just as an ordinary citizen, it would seem like these laws are put in ta place to protect employees, right? And well, yet, he, all they do is profit a group of predatory attorneys who find these things and try and extort quick money from you, knowing it's cheaper, easier to pay than to fight, even if you're in the right. And the purpose of the law isn't to isn't just to prevent problems, it, it should be to correct these situations. Here, here's another example of a way that it changes employees' behavior and, and doesn't help out the employee. We'll, we'll have employees come to me uh, or our managers and say, hey, I want to leave early today, 
but I want to get in my whole eight hours. Can I take a short lunch? Yeah. You know, I would, mm. I, you know, I'm going to take my kids got a soccer practice. Yeah, whatever. exactly. You know, soccer practice. Got to go pick up my kid from school. But, right. you know, I still want to get my full eight hours in. Um, no, sorry. You have to take a full half hour or longer. Right. You can't, you, you don't can't want take it. a short lunch. You don't lunch. need it. And you can't uh, suspend. You can't voluntarily go without it. That's right. It's no. not even. It's not even voluntary. Not at all. <laughs> you have to take thirty minutes at least. Yeah. Well, we have to take at least a couple minutes here. This isn't voluntary either. We got to take a couple minutes and pay the bills ourselves and keep this show on the air and give us a chance to digest all that you've said. It's it's frightening. It's fearful. It's hard to wrap my head around. But we're going to try and do all that and come back with some positive, upbeat notions of what we can do to prevent it or what do you do when you get hit. I'd like to hear all of that and more when we come back. From this break, you listen to the California Labor Law Odyssey right here in Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net. Imagine what it would feel like to lose everything. Your job, your home, your family, your dignity. This has happened to thousands of the men, women, veterans, and young adults we serve at Working Wardrobes. What do we do to help? We provide career development services, life skills workshops, job skills training. We provide the perfect interview outfit, and we get clients placed in jobs. Call Working Wardrobes, 714-210-2460. Donate, volunteer, invest. Higher. I'm on the observation deck of the Empire State Building to demonstrate how much material waste management recycles. As North America's largest residential recycler, last year alone waste management recycled 12.9 million tons. How much is that? Let's do the math. Carry the six. It's enough to fill this building more than 27 times. With experience like that, we're bound to have a program that can help your business recycle. Talk to Waste Management or visit thinkgreen.com. Okay, we're back on the California Labor Law Odyssey with somebody who's taken the trip to hell that we're all afraid of uh, even imagining here. Welcome back, our guest, uh, Vincent, and your company, what was the company again? Santa Fe Importers. The company's been around since the 1940s when your grandfather founded One of them it. was 1898. Well, the company you bought, you bought another company, yeah, that right. makes, uh, what, tamales or tamales something? Tamales and chili. And you guys make Italian uh, uh, prosciutto or something? Or? Sausage, meatballs, pepperoni. Okay. And a tamale. And a tamale on, on top. <laughs> Do you ever put uh, spaghetti sauce on the tamales? <laughs> <laughs> Not if you want to eat it. All right, so you got hit. Uh, it started in uh, workman's comp claim after you let somebody go, and they came back and said, oh, we now think we were hurt and injured, the typical, can't prove it was fraud, but there's an awful lot of fraud that happens in that world. And the attorney quickly turned it into a PAGA lawsuit, uh, which became this private attorney general, which opened up Pandora's box into your uh, lunch breaks, into your uh, pay stubs, and you ended up paying what? What was the settlement? Settlement was three hundred thousand dollars, and in addition, we had to pay our own attorneys one hundred and fifty thousand. So almost a half a million dollars. Right. This thing, this uh, trip cost you. So you're mad as hell. And you're thinking, somebody, uh, I'm, I'm not just going to go quietly into the night here. I'm going to do something. What did you do? So, uh, well, I got in touch with uh, Marianne Marino with Kayla and, um, <laughs> and uh, actually so we took had a, on our last show. Yes, exactly. Check her out. Yeah, took a couple trips up to Sacramento um, to, to try and. Because you uh, weren't just going to roll over. You're still mad. You're still burned that I'm this still happened. still mad. <laughs> you're still mad to this day. All right, so you called up uh, who in the state? Who do you call up? Well, uh, we who, who we do you testify to? we uh, well, but we were up there once and, and testified for the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee and another time before the uh, Assembly Labor Committee, um, and basically told our stories. There was a, a Congress uh, Assemblyman uh, Vincent Fong. Yeah, uh, Assemblyman Vince Fong had uh, put together a bill and he was trying to get it pushed through to have some sort of PAGA reform. Okay. And the Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse, Kayla, uh, you know, and. Cabia, uh, we were behind some, you know, reform, some type of a change. Anything. And Give us a help here. Pay attention. So, There's a problem here. So Vince went to Sacramento to testify. Right. These laws are being abused. Right. So basically I told my story in support of um, uh, Mr. Fong's legislation. And what did he want to do? Just real briefly, what was his legislative pro- What were his, I, I'm sure it doesn't fix everything, but what was he trying to fix? Well, he's trying to reform the PAGA law so that it would be more fair, so there was a, a fix. You know, there was a, an ability to fix before 
you know, you're under extending the, the time to 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 fix the because that's the purpose of the law. If Correct. you get caught in violation, fix it. That's what the laws are there for to prevent it from happening. And if we do find it happen, then fix it. That's really what's in, in the interest of the citizens. Fix it for the employees. Fix it for us. Fix it for everybody. Right. right. So paint the picture, Vince. What 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 happened? What was it like when you so went to they had all sorts of different. Um, pieces of legislation that they were proposing for the... For a lot the, of bills they were reviewing. Right, and most of them were uh, favorable to unions and, and labor. And it was interesting to me, watching all the committee members, they were very, very attentive to all those groups. In fact... Who perhaps uh, put uh, money into their campaigns and their coffers. Here, absolutely. Right? In fact, uh, when some of them passed and all the assembly uh, committee members agreed, hey, we're going to forward this to the assembly... Uh, even the assembly members would would get up and cheer along with the um, the people who are trying to the lobbyists the, right. exactly. So a lot of the union members they all had uh, shirts. I noticed they were that's wearing right. the same shirts and they were. So you're that's morning. They're testifying on lots of different bills, and some of these went right through to great acclaim, to great glory. What happens when right. you're so the this other bill comes up and you you're asked to testify? What's what's that? We got up and I, I told my story, and I noticed all these assembly people. Some of them walked out of the room. They walked out of the uh, some of them got on their cell phones, were texting. Uh, they definitely were not paying attention to to my story. Nobody. How much time did they give you to talk? Oh, I think it was less than three minutes. Maybe maybe less than two. <laughs> two minutes to tell your story of how you were hit for a half a million dollars, hit and run. If if this happened on the street, if somebody got a hit and run accident and got half a million dollars, they'd be screaming bloody murder here and and how many how many people were testifying uh for for assemblyman fong's bill how, how many uh business owners when he went assembled the group to try right. and move the uh assembled do you remember well i was there i mean i was there with another gentleman that we, right. we both testified but what struck me more was on the other side of the table That's the group that um you know, it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't employee groups that were trying to oppose this bill uh, there were the trial attorneys, the, their industry groups. The trial attorneys? They're the ones that didn't want to see this change. Exactly. Because they're because making money on they're it. They're the ones the benefiting. Unions. And the unions. Now tell about that. It was an interesting story. For example, you said the United Farm Workers were, came out against this bill. They did. They came out. They would bring up a. Uh, I would. Say, I'm. I'm represent the Teamsters Union, and I oppose this bill. And then another guy. I represent the United Farm Workers, and I oppose this bill. And you would have just this long line of people marching through <laughs> right. opposing a bill. And I would bet they don't even understand the bill they're opposing. <laughs> well, they were called forth to uh, the. It's right. like they bring in a group of people to to just say say no yeah, we, or yes. We got a we got a consistent we got a group that was ready to oppose anything here if we say so here. Correct. All right now, but here's what I the irony that you pointed out before the show: the United Farm Workers themselves, as an organization, as employers, have been hit with well, a PAGA. Well, normally lawsuit. PAGA, you know, with collective bargaining agreements, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So how so? How so? Well, let me just give you an example. So if you work at Pelican Bay. The big, uh, okay, resort. All right, and you are a prison guard. Guess what? You can work a 12-hour shift. Oh, I'm shift. sorry, Pelican Bay. I'm thinking the golf cart. You're Pelican Bay, the... No, I'm the thinking prison. Pelican Hills, Pelican Bay, the prison. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I, I've got some friends in Pelican Bay. <laughs> I, I won't go this. into that. All right. So they can well, you're work. an evil employer. you probably got lots of friends That's up right. there. Yeah. But they can work a 12-hour shift, and yeah. they can skip lunch and breaks. That's part of their collective bargaining as agreement. As the unions, as, as the, uh, the, as the unions. guards, whatever. It's so they don't have to guard. follow the 1,400-page labor law digest. Because they've negotiated out of right. that. So a lot of the unions are, 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 are a little bit insulated from it. The only issue that they made a mistake on was the uh, organizers. So all these unions have organizers. They go mm -hmm. out and they're, uh, you know, holding rallies and uh, going to people's houses. Trying to get people to join the join, union. Join the union, you know. and um, They're employees of the union. Right. So the United Farm Workers organizers claimed they did not get their lunches and their <laughs> breaks on time. So the United Farm Workers who stood up and said, we don't want to see the PAGA lawsuits go away or, or be reduced or reformed, we as an organization, however, have been hit by one ourselves. They're, they're almost bankrupt over it. Half of their income is going towards this PAGA lawsuit because it was funny when I first started researching some of this stuff, there was a gentleman from the Teamsters Union, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he said, well, if you feel it's wrong, just fight it. Just fight it. 
Well, that's what the United Farm Workers did. They just <laughs> fought it. They I'm sorry to laugh, but yeah, right. And and guess what? It cost them about two million dollars. And they still lost. And still lost. And what do you think the settlement cost? It's about two million for everything. Wow. Yeah, I mean their own attorney. I think they spent one point two million. I think so the settlement was like. I'd love to 000. have my challenge to you is get somebody from one of their legal counsels on, and explain how on the one hand you're fighting reform for a bill that you suffered from yourself. Labor laws are complicated because of one thing, and everybody's afraid to say it. Mm -hmm. it they're let's complicated say, let's because, say it right here today. because the labor unions are influencing all these laws, and they're doing that because they want everybody to become unionized, because if you're unionized, you can have these collective bargaining agreements, and you don't have to follow the 1,400 oh, pages. Let's, labor let's stop on that for a second. So... I don't care that all the small business are getting beat up, maybe even ripped off by a predatory group of extortionists called attorneys who simply find these violations and hope that you'll settle quickly and they'll move on to the next under the fear that it'll cost you 10 times more even if you're right. They know that. They just want it. They're slip and fall. They're like slip and fall attorneys. It's cheaper to pay them and let them make them go away. They, you're saying a lot of these labor unions are saying that's okay. We'll let that go on because let them let them let them sink because you know hopefully be, that'll help grow our membership. Because if you instead of uh, having uh, non-unionized employees, maybe if you had them all unionized, see we could negotiate this out on your behalf and you'd be safer with us. Than and you I are would with them. challenge any any labor organizer to come on the show. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's and get I would one love on. to have a debate with them. Let's but you do know, that. I think yeah. Vince had, he, you know, we were talking earlier. So they have though. a motivation to to hope that these uh, lawsuits become so painful that the out that the, the only way out is to organize your employees and legally negotiate these things away. Correct. It also shows you how, what a strong lobby these uh, trial attorneys have also. The trial attorneys who themselves are representing these shady well they're folk. stealing they're stealing uh, good people's money like Vince so they have a lot to yeah. spend but <laughs> in, and right. in the right. name yeah. in the name of protecting employees so uh, i think there's a there's an economist i think his name is Bruce Yandel and he talks about bootleggers and baptists for talk about that you that's, that's, yeah what a fascinating say, look at uh, legislation Let, let's think of legislation this way every bill that goes through there's what there's, there's so a, there's always two groups there's the uh, the group that has the moral high ground so it's the group that says, hey, we need to change this law to make society better. Right. Uh, and Help then the, these people. Right. And then there's the group that profits from it, that they also want the law to pass, but they might not be profiting uh, profiting in a way that doesn't seem exactly uh, moral. So, so let's so, use your bootleggers and Baptist analogy. Let's, let's so say he, liquor, for example. Right, <laughs> right. So, so of course, we want to, um, we want to make uh, the sell, sale of liquor on, on Sundays illegal. Right. You know, and Save so, people's souls. Right. And so those are the Baptists. We want to do that. And then you've got the bootleggers who say, hey, that's great. Yeah, we want to make that illegal because we're going to benefit from selling illegal <laughs> liquor on, on Sundays. So, you've got two people, the devil and the angel, both pushing for the same law but for different reasons. Right. One, that, thinks right. it's, one thinks it's salvation and the other knows he'll profit from the sin. Right, right. and that's, that's what happens with PAGA. You've got the union saying, hey, we have to protect employees' rights, you know, make sure they get their breaks and they're getting paid correctly. And who doesn't think that's a good idea? I, right. I, I mean, I myself, I agree. You know, employers have to pay their employees correctly. They have to pay them for the work they've done. They should give them breaks. People should have breaks. You know, nobody's saying that. That's not the case. But the first resolution shouldn't be... We're going to sue you for so we're going to drop an atomic bomb on your organization unless you pay us. The penalty shouldn't be the first penalty shouldn't be pay us. This first penalty should be fix it, shouldn't it? Well, when if, the, if you're looking for the welfare of the employees uh, going forward, well, it should be. But when you have billions of dollars going to trial attorneys, yeah. uh, it's kind of hard to um, to get them to see the I other mean, way. I mean, how, how long have some of your employees worked at Santa Fe? Oh, I've had, I have employees that are have been with us 30, 35 years. So 30, 35 years. You think they've been wrongly treated? You think they're complaining about the, the lunch that, that they're taking a half an hour You wouldn't think late? they would have stayed for 30 years if no they felt way. that way, right? No way. Absolutely. And, in fact, these are often uh, instances, particularly the lunches, where it's something they requested. You're trying to comply with that. They should be them. allowed to. We don't need to, to, to write... You know, these laws are getting out of hand. You know, they, they don't need to continually write all of these laws to tell us how to run a business. Sorry. 
they, they don't need to do that. They're not there. They're not involved with it every day. And again, the only reason they do is either because you know, there's money be, to be made in pushing these regulations. I hate to look at it that way, but there are group, we'll call them the Baptists, we're the, the moralists who want to save and protect people, and they want to use the power of government to do so, rightly or wrongly. But what they don't realize is the way they write these laws don't help the employees, hurt the business owners in ways they didn't imagine, and empower a group of predatory con artists to come after you. Absolutely. Right, to legally extort you. Yeah, no. It's blackmail. Yeah, con artist. I mean, nailed it. nobody set out to do that. Nobody set out to to uh, create a class of, to to find a group and, and make them exploit these laws and turn them into something terrible here. I, I don't know. You know, uh, it's kind of funny that uh, Gray Davis and it's Joe Dunn. Joe Dunn was the assembly member that got this going. <laughs> Joe Dunn was one of the people that started yeah, and, this. Yeah, and I think thing. we all know that. I don't know. Do, do you know about Joe Dunn? I I've heard stories that Joe Dunn ain't uh, in the legislature anymore. Yeah, and and he was in charge of the um, something to do with the attorneys, and and I think he was doing some embezzling, and he's. <laughs> Well, it's, it's he's uh, in the big house now. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, he's not quite in the big house, but he lost his position with the bar association, the California bar association. It's interesting to me that a lot of our assembly and senators in California are trial attorneys. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, we need to examine this to, as we delve deeper into this. But in the short time we have left, I'm going to keep peeling back the different layers of this. I, I just find it marvelous. I got to say this again: that the United Farm Workers shows up and opposes this reform bill i was shocked I, I couldn't be there i was watching it on video and i was just shocked and and i actually called vince the next day first thing in the morning i didn't want to call him too early <laughs> because i said hey man you know what i give you a lot of credit a lot of courage you went up there you told your story and and, and i hate to say it I, I will say it he got his ass kicked yeah you know they beat him up up there and the it bill was, did not pass it, it, well the way he was oh. treated was horrible it was the only bill that didn't pass that day <laughs> the yeah, only the bill that didn't pass that day. <laughs> well it passed every other bill but not that's this right one. but you, you should not treat a business owner a job creator you know what give the man some time you, you only gave him a couple minutes and, and and you get up and walk away from him you sit on your cell phone that that was disgraceful anybody that sat on that committee and the people who stood up, talk about the height of hypocrisy, were themselves, should have been on his side saying, yeah, we've been, United Farm Workers as an organization, we understand your pain because we're feeling it ourselves. Right. Yeah, one of the assembly uh, committee members said um, explicitly, she said, businesses have way too much power and we're here to correct that. What? Yeah. Publicly. Publicly. Right. And that's part of the problem. This isn't, you know, everybody loves the David and Goliath story. There's the, no fairness. There's no fairness, and there's nowhere to turn. And when your own attorney says, pay them, they recognize that there's no way out of this. So you got to pay your attorney to say, just pay them. you got to pay these rats who you know are wrong and, and misusing the law to just profit themselves. And none of this fixes it or helps the employees. None of it. None they don't it. benefit from this hardly at all yeah, none of it. they get a little bit of money as a little a little thank you but it's pennies compared to the big bucks that the uh attorneys make the administrators make we got to talk about that in future shows not just the attorneys have benefit this is a whole group that comes in that has to pay you can't they pay write the paychecks they yeah there the has checks. to be a neutral third party now that right. gets entered into this and there's money and that's to be made a, that's, that's probably an attorney's buddy probably, or, or yeah, some relationship they got. And then because they're suing on behalf of the state, the state normally, maybe not in a settlement case, gets a big chunk of it as well. None of it, very little of it left to go to the employees, not about fixing the underlying violation or correcting it, and not nothing, therefore, that the employee can do but pay. Employer, yeah. Yeah. All right, on that depressing note, give us some uh, answers, activists. You tried fighting it. Would you tell everybody else just to roll over and shut up, or should they all band together and shout? Absolutely not. We, we have to all get together and, and start shouting. And, and my recommendation or my advice to any small business owner is to, to make yourself bulletproof as much as possible yeah. and really in, educate yourself on what the laws are. Um, you're going to have to put new policies into place. and um, Maybe even... I'll use another fancy word, draconian. 
uh, oh, really right. harsh. Wow. Uh, you got to be tough. You Another know? Scrabble word. I'm uh, giving you a couple today here. <laughs> Onerous and draconian, yes. Yeah, your employees are not going to be happy about some of these changes. Uh, you're going to be taking they might away some of like their them. Yeah, right, flexibility and freedom. Right. Uh, and if they have a problem with it, tell them to talk to the state. <laughs> well, you know, Tom, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, you're going to have to be much stricter. You're going to have to uh, insist that they follow these rules whether they but want I to do or not. But I do think, you know, uh, the employees do need to get active and say things to the state, too, because they don't. I think a lot of times people are are not compelled by employers anymore, and I don't know why. I don't know what's happened here. Yeah, you're seen as the bad guy. It's not the David and Goliath. You're 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 seen as Goliath, and they're seen as David. But the, I'm sure the there's has... a lot of employees out there that have uh, the same story and would love to, you know, leave early or have that flexible schedule. And employers are no longer allowing it because of, you know trial attorneys more so when we live in a two income family and we're all stretched and and maybe you got a couple jobs you got to go to and you're trying to take care of your family and you're trying to take care of your aging parents and a whole bunch of other things we hear about all the time here you need that flexibility absolutely yeah all right so um again what do what do you tell people to do get bulletproof how do they get bulletproof where do i learn to get bulletproof well reach out to our organization www.com Cabia.org, C-A-B-I-A.org. Which stands for? Uh, California Business and Industrial Alliance, and we'll okay. lead you in the right direction. And we'll there's some other out. sister organizations, uh, affiliate groups are all sort of fighting the fight together. You had one here last week. Uh, Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse, Kayla. Right. All it's, these. Uh, www.kayla, C-A-L-A.org. And, any others we'll look forward to? Or are you guys fighting this alone? Or are there other Well, we've got others that, that are working on it, and, and I'm going to try to you know bring others onto the show and, and really... We want to educate, we want to inform, and we want to get a large voice. And with that voice, get some action, get some reform. Change. Here. We want some real change. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to change the topic to another one next week here. We talk more on the California Labor Law Odyssey. Give us, again, the websites we can go to. If anybody wants to read, Vincent, oh, are you open to uh, yeah. having anybody, if, if, if they want to talk to somebody who's been burned like they are or suddenly been hit with a... Or uh, want a, 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 a meatball sandwich. Or a meatball sandwich. <laughs> yeah, spicy. Absolutely. Spicy meatball sandwich. Are you open to uh, talking to other business owners who might hear this and say, I, I, I want to talk to a, a person who's been there and been through this because I'm just going through it myself or I'm afraid of going through it? Yeah, actually, I'd be happy to talk to any... Um any business owners that are that are interested and would just like you know my perspective or advice, um, can I give my email? Please, yeah. So my email address is Vince, V I N C E, at Marisa Foods. That's M A R I S A F O O D S dot com. Well, I appreciate that because it, it sounds like you've been through it and you're trying to tell other people, hey, this can happen to you. And he's speaking up, it. which which some are afraid to, and I give him all the credit and courage. Were you, for la last question, were you ever afraid to sue? Because I would be. I would think, oh boy, if I raise this, I'm going to have the whole uh, power of the state come down on my head. The state was part of this lawsuit. And suddenly there are going to be health violations. Suddenly there's going to be tax violations. Suddenly there's going to be fire violations or whatever. All of a sudden, people are going to start showing up at my door if I dare speak truth to power. Yeah, the first time I I talked to to Marianne, I I actually did feel that fear, and uh, took me a little bit to overcome that. Uh, and um, what really got me moving was I thought, well, th this is really wrong, and there somebody needs to fight to to, to fix it. And Have stand you up, suffered right? because of that? Have you been sued again? Have you? Have other inspectors showed up at your door to pressurize you to sh pressure you to shut up? No, I haven't seen that, but I, I mean, we've continued to, to, you know, get lawsuits, ADA lawsuits. You know, there's, there's you know, businesses are, are always at risk here in California. That seems um, to be just a cost of doing business these days. That's absolutely that there's right. Always... That shouldn't be acceptable. That's the problem. People, too many people are accepting that's the cost and of doing business. Consumers don't realize that they're bearing Sorry. those costs. Right. Yeah. And there are lots of, you know, it's workman comp, we talked about Americans with Disability. That's another, a good law that can often get abused and turned into just an extortion. I was in a restaurant. We all lived in fear. People would roll in just to uh, create a find a minor violation and, and hit us with a major pay us or or else we'll do this. Uh, slip and fall. There's all these kind of scams and cons going around here. We just sort of roll over and build it into the cost of doing business and hope. We, we don't want to accept that anymore. Time to change. Time to change. It'd be timely. Okay. <laughs> 
All right. Thank you so much. Um, uh, one last time, the thank organization, you, and uh, just I want to plant this in people's head. There is a group of people being formed. I'm assuming you're a member of Kabi or yourself here, Vincent. That's correct. And you and others are coming forth to say, don't take this anymore. Join with us and we can fight it. The organization is the California Business and Industrial, Industrial Alliance. Alliance. Kabia dot org. C-A-B-I-A dot org. All right. We're going to keep fighting the fight. Join us each and every week as we continue to tell tales on the California Labor Law Odyssey.